Hello everyone, my name is Dredd. Welcome to Miss Valley Entertainment News. We're covering a little um, Wayward Realms news. Little video I'm calling is Wayward Realms Daggerfall 2. So we're reacting to a video by Wolfheart FBS called The Wayward Realms is 5400 times the size of Skyrim. Update and interview. Let's get into it. This original video, link down below in the description. You want to check it out for yourself. Let's go. Realms is an upcoming medieval fantasy, first of its kind, grand RPG. And this sub-genre term, grand RPG, is not something that I came up with here. This is what the devs refer to their game as. The Wayward Realms is a first of its kind, grand RPG, where your decisions dictate your story and determine which path you take in this massive open world. Stick around as later on in this video, I will be interviewing Ted Peterson himself, chapter markers below. I have covered this game's development a few times in the past on the channel, but with the recent announcement of an upcoming Kickstarter campaign, which is said to lead to an early access alpha period where players get access to the prologue chapter of the game i figured now is a great time to do another video chapter markers below do note that all the video footage that you're seeing today is pre-alpha footage so quick summary of what this game is before we talk to ted the wayward realms is being developed by once lost games a studio based out of north carolina that's headed by a few of the og devs from some of the earlier elder scrolls games it is said to be the spiritual successor to the elder scrolls daggerfall from way back in 96 Daggerfall was known Ooh. for its insanely large world map, which is, of course, only possible with the heavy use of procedural generation technology. Quite the graphics. Its lore and also its immense amount of player freedom. Don't want to focus on the main quest and story? Sure, head off in any direction that you want and roleplay as a bandit or perhaps a night sentinel. This seems to be a similar theme for the Wayward Realms. Now, of course, a large hey, map... I'm looking at that. I think I did play that game. I think I did play some Daggerfall at some point. I don't think I got very far into it, though. I can't remember why that is, or how I got my hands on it. I think somebody gave me a disc that had it on it. Somebody gave me a disc with a bunch of games on it, and Daggerfall was one of them, and I tried it out for, like, maybe an hour or two. That's right. Remember that now. That's quite a while ago. Especially an insanely large map does not equate to a game being good. It's the content within. But this is one of this game's very unique features. We are told to expect realistically scaled cities and towns. And do note that cities can grow, deteriorate, and even be entirely destroyed by war. It's going to be thousands cool. of labyrinthian dungeons to explore and a virtual game master to tailor the experience to your particular character's playstyle. This game is all about player choice and doing what you want to do in the world reacting to that. And the game's four core pillars are restoring scope, choice, consequences, and also role playing to RPGs. No two players are going to ever have the same exact experience. You can be a player who lives life in the shadows of the streets, role-playing as a thief, or perhaps work your way into more of an aristocratic life and not concern yourself with the matters of those filthy peasants. Sorry, I realized we didn't full screen this. My apologies. Even more along the lines of freedom of choice, you're not going to be choosing pre-baked classes in this game. Rather, you'll play as a class of your own design and making with custom skills, spells, potions, and enchantments. Sounds cool. So yes, you can build yourself into that tanky, heavy armor warrior, but you can also create classes that fall way out of the traditional RPG class boxes. Once Lost is returning to classic CRPG design philosophies for this game, something I personally love to hear. So I'd expect plenty of deep and complex systems. There's even going to be spellcrafting, and I'm sure many of you may miss systems like that from games such as Oblivion. The Wayward Realms will of course feature a ton of quests, many of which will be non-linear in nature, a combat system, and do note that although the first person perspective is the primary focus, Once Lost has said that they want to provide a third person option as well. There will be magic, deep dark dungeons, alchemy, a wide variety of different weapon types, deep character progression that doesn't force you into those specific class roles, the ability to purchase homes, there's going to be ships, fishing, climbing, horseback riding, a reputation and law system, and the list goes on. Quickly touching back on player progression, Once Lost is going with a system where there is no player level, rather your skills will level up individually through their use, which yeah, is a bit more of a hardcore old school mechanic as you don't see as many RPGs using systems like that these days as far as attributes go as of now expect willpower endurance dexterity perception intelligence charisma speed and strength 
There's also, of course, going to be different races to choose from, and each race will have bonuses to their attributes based on their physiology and also characteristics. The playable races that were confirmed a few years ago were orcs, humans, elves, cambions, dwarves, and goblins. There's certainly going to be more than that. On the Wayward Realms fandom wiki, you can see a larger playable race list, but oh, I'm not play confirmed a troll. all of these myself. In this game, you'll start off as <laughs> an adventurer, fun. and you'll be allying yourself with one of the many feuding factions, which is said to lead to witnessing major world events that will shape the very history of the archipelago. The archipelago is a land that is grounded, but also fantastical, and one thing I love to see Once Lost focusing on is, of course, the world lore. On their socials and on some of their videos, you can find all sorts of lore drops on different deities, information on creatures such as why goblins or why some goblins may wear fake beards, different noble houses and orc clans, the factions, ethnicities, and groups of peoples such as the Jungaran horsemen, and the list goes on. As we get closer to early access or official release, I'll probably dive much deeper into the lore that we have. The lore discovery does seem like it can also be a major part of a player's experience for those who are into that. You know, collecting books, finding ancient runestones, item descriptions, etc. I'll do much deeper dives into this game in the future, but for now, let's have a chat with Ted. Hello, Ted. Thank you very much for coming onto the channel. If you don't mind just giving us a little bit of an introduction cool. as to who you are and your history in game development. Uh, well, sure. Uh, so my name is Ted Peterson. I've been making games since the early 90s. Um, my first job was at Bethesda Softworks, where I worked on a bunch of games. Back at, back in the day, we cranked them out real fast. So uh, probably half of my games that I've done, no, that's not true. Probably like a third of the games I've done have been from Bethesda, uh, just because we made them real quick and uh, back in the day. Uh -huh. And uh, so I was there uh, through 96 and uh, came out to the West Coast and worked on uh, a couple game companies, uh, you know, EA, Disney, Activision, smaller uh, game companies, and uh, made a bunch of games out there. And then uh, came back out here on the East Coast and uh, sort of... Uh, Fell in with some old uh, uh, partners in crime like Julian LaFay mm -hmm. and uh, started uh, talking about doing a spiritual successor to uh, our game Daggerfall. And uh, that's kind of where we are right now. So you and Julian, um, from what I've seen online, like the big part of your guys' reputation is Elder Scrolls Arena and also Daggerfall. Did you work on Morrowind mm -hmm. by any chance? I did. I worked on Morrowind and Oblivion. Oh, they, wow. okay. uh, I worked on those uh, as a contractor, so I was not an employee mm -hmm. uh, at the time, um, but I was kind of a consultant, and I, I wrote a bunch of books for them. And what is your role now at Once Lost Games? Uh, what, at Once Lost Games, I'm, I guess there's a difference between my role at Once Lost Games versus my role on Wayward Realms. Mm -hmm. So uh, Once Lost Games, I'm the CEO, and at... Uh, for Wayward Realms, uh, I think my title is Creative Director. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, design and writing and uh, and uh, someone who comes in and says, well, I don't like that hat. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, is there a more modern day RPG that kind of inspired you to, you know, really come back at it and anything in modern times that you really look up to or... No, no. Well, I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. It's part of the reason why I, I started doing this is because um, there really hasn't been that mm -hmm. I, I kind of felt like RPGs are moving in a direction that um, I think is less interesting. Um, and uh, I really like to, you know, I, I on the first two Elder Scrolls games, I thought we were moving in a certain direction. And um as, as much as I enjoyed the later Elder Scrolls games and a, a lot of other uh, recent RPGs, uh, and, and and there are certainly elements of it where, like, I recognize, obviously, graphical, you know, improvements, mm -hmm. control uh, improvements, different uh, other aspects that individual pieces, like, we're going to incorporate into it. Um kind of a, a, an overall philosophy and uh, game design is, is, is something that I, I think um, wouldn't, uh, would benefit from a little uh, 
uh, trajectory adjustment. So interestingly enough, as Ted talks, he's he's clearly a much more of an old school RPG fan. He wants uh, freedom of choice, maybe um, maybe feeling I, I don't want to put words to his mouth, but maybe feeling that modern RPGs are too focused on um, combat. Maybe I, I don't know. Um, you know. Going back to Daggerfall and, and, and what he wants to make this game, it just seems to be about open world, open choice. You don't even have to be a warrior. You know, you, you could just be someone living in a town who works at the farms outside of town, makes enough money to, uh, you know, purchase a plot of land and then work on building yourself a building and creating your own bar. Um, and then tending the bar, owning the bar, running the bar, bringing customers in. Like, can you do all that in, in Wayward Realms? Potentially. I, I don't know how detailed that'll go, but you don't you don't have to be locked into, I'm going to be a wizard, a warrior, or a thief, and I'm going to go do the quest line to solve the quest to save so-and-so to be the hero in the end. Like, it sounds like the Wayward Realms is like, you don't have to do anything any of that you could just plop yourself into this spot and live here as a as your own npc in, in a sense if you want i mean you could certainly do whatever you want you could be the hero uh for sure but um so it's interesting it's an interesting take on things it's certainly a lot different than most games nowadays a little bit more like a little bit more of a life stim in a fantasy setting than it is a what we think of as an RPG of today. I think. Yeah, I mean, I totally understand that. A lot of people, myself, and a lot of people on my channel, like overall RPGs over the past maybe ten years or so, are kind of seem to be going more into like the streamlined nature, appeal to as right. many people as possible, and it kind of sure. takes away a lot of the things that made RPGs special in the '90s and the early 2000s. So. Totally understand that. Now, for those who have not played Daggerfall before, can you explain why you guys are calling the Wayward Realms a spiritual successor to this game? Um, well, I guess a couple of reasons. Uh, if you haven't played Daggerfall before, it's a weird game. Um, and uh, and I say that with... with uh, I've always said that weird is good. So, like, that's not me dissing on myself. Um, but it's a game where... Uh, it's very nonlinear. It's uh, massively huge. Mm -hmm. um, probably, uh, if you list a thing of like, uh, you know, biggest sandbox worlds created, uh, it's up there. Um, I, I think it used to be number one, but you know, different things have changed, and you know, may not be number one anymore. Um, oh. Like really uh, fun character creation, which to this day. You can find YouTube channels where people are trying to play Daggerfall in different ways and saying, I'm going to be uh, a guy who is uh, only able to do social skills and, you know, no magic, no weaponry. And it's cool. Like, you really have a good time doing it. So, really role play off um, of that. Well, that, that's the thing. It's a call the role playing game for a reason. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, it, it should be a thing where you create a character. It's a good point because if it's a role playing game and the game defines your role before you ever start it, here's your role. Well, you've been given your role. Play it. That is a role playing game, but it's not allowing you to pick your role, is it? So that's interesting. Character uh that you imagine would be interesting to play. And even if you say maybe I'm only gonna play this for a couple hours just to see how the game reacts to that um that that's a, a worthy thing that we want to uh make sure people can do so i have a very long time uh patron of the channel named volk nasty and he wanted me to ask you a question how All is right. this game a first of its kind grand rpg i see you guys using that kind of sub genre term before and like what's your twist on the i, I guess you could say tried and true rpg formula that's been around for so long yeah, and but, but I think the grand RPG thing came from uh, discussions where we're talking about doing a lot of things bigger. Okay. Um, so, uh, I, I, you know, 
grand doesn't mean anything, you know, outside of marketing, but uh, but it is to us a thing where we uh, can never think small. We always have to, you know, think, okay, you know, what's the craziest thing a player might want to do? Okay. You know, where, you know, like, and again, the, the landscape that we've uh, done for Wayward Realms is uh, larger than the one we did for Daggerfall. It's because we're like, no reason to go backwards. So I think I uh, saw a player on YouTube um, walked across the map in Daggerfall and it took him, I think, 69 hours. It's like a time lapse video. Have you ever seen that video before? I have not, but uh, I'm, I'm surprised it was only that. Yeah, maybe maybe he uh, maybe he used some console commands or something like that, but that's still pretty crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess 69 hours if you don't get killed along the way or, you mm -hmm. know, have random encounters and stuff like that. So, so that kind of ties into, uh, obviously, procedural generation is being used. You can't handcraft a world that that's big or that's that right. big. But there's a lot of concerns around procedural generation at times, and it can sometimes make games feel a bit soulless. So what are you mm -hmm. guys doing to kind of overcome that, especially with your map size and how much of this game is handcrafted or what is handcrafted? Well, no, I, I think it's a fair point, but what was weird is, you know, that was the reason why Daggerfall was so big was that we, you know, did a lot of proc gen and we were guilty a lot of a lot of the things that, you know, people are worried about with, uh, you know, the world having a sameness. Mm -hmm. So I will say, uh, there's a lot of things that we're doing where, when it comes to creating, you know, you know everything from the landscape to the villages um, that we are uh, making that part of the algorithm that we're saying, like, if this has been done before, if something like this has been done before, we're not going to do it again. And things need to make sense that if it's a uh you know a, a town set on a river mm -hmm. then uh it, it could be a pirate's village it could be a trader's center you know it, like we we try to come up with themes around uh the different uh places just kind of like the using the mind of a person who would handcraft a village for example okay um that you are thinking in terms of theme and what makes sense for for this location and that same you know same sim goes for like you know building well, i guess then you'd be programming that into the procedural generation you could see why in that case this game is being developed now rather than 10 years ago or 20 years ago um it just wouldn't have been possible it's interesting. It's interesting to see whether or not the procedural generation could keep up with a list of rules and, hey, do this with this and that and don't do this and, and everything else in creating procedurally, you know, towns, villages, and cities all over a massive map that you're going to explore or can explore. I, I would imagine there'd be like hard and fast rules like, hey, we're going to plop a town down over here. Don't have it be on the side of a mountain. So the whole village is, it's a really steep mountain. The whole village is like, ah, like at a 45 degree angle. Like, don't do that. Right. Um, but I can imagine making smaller rules like, hey, um, you know, if, uh, if you're building uh, near water and there's going to be like docks and stuff, and especially if you're on like a river or an ocean. Um, and you got, you know, people coming and going via the docks or the docks being important. Perhaps that would be an area of town A that is probably uh, a little bit more squalor and stuff as it tends to be around those kind of areas, especially in fantasy RPGs. And maybe there'd be a good place to have a bunch of inns down in that area as well for the people getting off work or getting off ship. Um, like those kind of rules would be fascinating to be able to just just program in there and try to get the system to be able to work that kind of stuff out. Really neat. Really neat. Things and dungeons and all that good stuff. So uh, how, how, in your experience, how far has procedural generation technology come since like the Daggerfall days? I think you guys are now using Unreal Engine 5 for this yes. game. Nice. Yeah, so a lot of it is though. also uh, based on uh, new technology. So we, we are on 5. Um, and uh, we're in uh, 
good contact with uh, the people at um, uh, Unreal to you know be be know what the latest things are that are coming out and kind of mm-hmm. be ahead of the curve. Uh, and, and we've suggested some things that they you know are adopting. So it's a two way conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. But there are things where where you do see even though people don't necessarily have a game with the same ambition and you know size that we're talking about that those technologies are already you know underway so okay all right now kind of transitioning into uh content in the game itself so is there going to be a main story that can be focused on in this game and will that story vary from player to player how's that going to work so uh i think that the hmm this is interesting uh so, uh, yes and no. So, uh, it, it is not, we have world events in the game, and there are things that are going to happen whether the player wants them to or not. Mm-hmm. The player does have some influence on them. So, um, and, and, and I, I'm trying hard not to do any spoilers. Okay. So, I, I can't really give examples, but like there's something that's going to happen that could happen sooner or later but the player can hustle it along or delay it, uh, but it will happen. And I guess you could probably assume it's a death uh, because people do die, whether you, you know, help them uh, help them along or you uh, try to save them, um, that is, that does happen. So, sorry. Touching on that a little bit is, say, let's say you killed like a, a mayor of a town. Is death permanent mm-hmm. in this game? Is that is that mayor gone or... Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. So yeah, really choice consequence. That's kind of a oh, big yeah. theme. Yeah. I, I oh, like yeah. that a lot. Now on a similar subject, I did hear you or not necessarily you, but somebody in one of the once lost videos mentioned a five act formula for quests. Could you explain a bit as to what this means? Oh, I, heard I, I didn't know that we had released that. Um, yeah, this has been a big thing for me. Uh, and again, so proc gen is not necessarily just for the world building, but it's also for, uh, you know, infinite quests. So uh, one of the things that I think was a big problem with, uh, and again, I, I'll, I'll, I'll call myself out. Like, So I do hope you're all enjoying this, by the way. Uh, Ted Peterson is a legend in the industry. Um, if you're watching this, then I'm going to take it you're interested in finding out what the hell they're up to at Once Lost Games with the Wayward Realms. Um, there's a lot of people, a lot of people very very interested in in this game and in this studio when what is going on it's you know their kickstarter did very very freaking well very quickly um people are signed up for their discord people are very very interested in this and i am uh i am interested i'm not at the point yet where i'm optimistic like i'm i i just don't know if they're gonna be able to pull off what they're talking about this is really tough so I'm interested. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on it. I'm hopeful, but I don't know yet. I don't know. I'm I'm not actually convinced. I want to see some gameplay, and we're not going to see that for a while. Um, however, their opening act that is available to those who uh, back the Kickstarter is supposed to be hopefully, hopefully, um, available by the end of next year. So that'll be your starter island only um interesting it's a long ways to go even for that but i will look forward to getting my hands on that as one of the kickstarter backers and playing that showing it off to you guys of course and talking about it and saying hey does this work or does it not work let's uh let's go through the rest of this things like daggerfall where you walked up with someone and they happened to be a quest giver and they said um you know my sister is a werewolf, and I need you to uh, go uh, to this dungeon and kill her, or you know, rescue her, or whatever. <clears throat> but you didn't get any lead up. There's no emotional investment. There's nothing like a handcrafted version of that would obviously be like, um, oh, there's a bunch of dead bodies that were found in this town, and uh, you know, the you know, the uh, the bartender's sister disappeared, or you know, things. Things that let you know um, that this isn't just a 
randomly generated quest that right. it is right. uh tied in with you know actual world events and it could connect back to that so the five act structure is the you know shakespearean structure where like the first act is uh, a whole lot of setup so it, it will be like dead bodies found in the town or um you know uh you know the barmaid sister disappearing it, th those could be two different quests and uh and then the you know all the way up to kind of building action to like the fifth uh fifth act which is the resolution which is beyond you know you get 500 gold pieces for for doing this um it's because you did this then uh your reputation changes uh it, it could have influenced things where like now that there's no longer a werewolf in this town that like changes you know mm -hmm. their connection with other people mm -hmm. um cool. you know it, it sets up the next play is basically. there an actual end to the game is there a credits roll credits or is this you can live in this world forever or no there's okay. no end to the game okay all right <laughs> Very cool. no end wow so there's no end to the game but there, there um there is uh a i guess end scenario so there's something that happens uh towards the end of uh you know again world events that uh leads into we're definitely thinking we're going to do a sequel to this and it's going to open it up to say all right this is the next thing that's going to happen and you're going to need to buy the next game okay so you got, you're kind of get yourself leading. involved you're kind of getting into yeah. like a world stage where you know you've you've kind of gotten to where the world is at and then that might yeah. lead into a sequel okay so i did want yeah. to touch quickly on um the classless system for the game a lot of people are always very curious about how classes work and stuff like that i did hear you guys mention that you can kind of build a character the way that you want how is this going to be represented are we going to have like skill trees and you can just go into any of them or how does that work yeah, it's going to be uh, similar to Daggerfall. So if you played that, then you'll kind of get the overall thing. There's some changes that we uh, I probably shouldn't talk too much about, um, about how you create your own character. But I really liked what we did with uh, Daggerfall specifically, um, where you could create your own class. So you could say, I'm going to be um, a book collector class. Yeah, and that is, <laughs> you know, all I care about. That's is awesome. Collecting though. books, and uh, how how many times have I? And honestly, God, how many times have I played Skyrim, where my character was trudging across the map, overburdened with no mount, trying to desperately get back to my home, with every I've got every book I came across is in my backpack. I mean, I'm carrying every book so I can go throw them onto the bookshelves or into containers or whatever. So my house is full of books. I wanted to collect every book. Every book I saw, I took. Didn't matter if I already had a copy. Like, I've done that many, many times in Skyrim with many different characters. It's been a while since I've done it, but I think mean, I've done it a lot. Um, collecting books, I don't know. It's something fascinating about the ability to just collect books, take them home with you um, in a game. Um, so I really appreciate they just brought up Book Collector here. That's awesome. Uh, you're going to, you know, you know, put put skills into those areas that help you on the, along that way. Um, what skills would those be? Like uh, reading comprehension, um, you know, book binding skill, uh, maybe the ability to not fall off a tall ladder while putting your books on a high bookshelf. Maybe the ability to build bookshelves for your books. Who knows? But that's how you identify. Um, I, I, I just think that again, to the role playing, you know, you're supposed to do a role playing game, so you should, you know, uh, play the game you want to play. So, what if I want to create a character who's a rabbit breeder? Hopefully, there's rabbits in the game. Um, maybe I want to start my own rabbit farm and breed rabbits and sell them for meat and or pets or as slave labor. Maybe you could hook them up to your wagon and have like 300 rabbits your wagon down the road that's probably not going to work but i i don't know maybe teach the the the, 
the, the rabbit's magic and give them little brooms and they'll fly around playing Quidditch. Who knows? That's pretty cool. So, like, what would ha like? What if I wanted to learn magic? Am I starting the game with a base level of magic, or am I going to come across an, a book that has a spell in it, or how would I learn a spell? Sure. Well, uh, so a couple of things. Uh, there's not going to be uh, the TES uh, Mages Guild on every corner, uh, you know, style thing. That uh, magic we want to be uh, rarer, and you know, I think. Part of the charm of magic is that it's not everyone in town can fire a fireball. Mm -hmm. So um, it it, it does need to be a thing they where can't? it's harder than some other things, but you know, obviously potentially more powerful. So um, really in all skills, uh, there is a part where the early stages aren't that hard. And uh, as you're uh, getting better, obviously you can be reading different books to learn about your skills, but at some point you're going to get to have to get a mentor to, you know, Trainer. bring you to the top level. Okay. All right. And I think this is a good time where we can transition into non-combat skills. And someone on my discord server named shadow black wanted me to ask you, can we expect plenty of non-combat skills in this game? And if so, are there any rather unique ones, you know, outside of persuasion and lock pick picking that you could, enlighten us on um yeah again i i don't want to give things away that are um going to be a spoiler but uh a lot of times we spend on like when we're talking about quests and you know uh ways to get through things of saying all right what if you are like a foppish aristocrat how can you uh get through this and you know things like you know, obviously, all all the thiefy you know skills are obviously going to be in there, but you know, different uh, aristocratic skills where it comes like to bribery, um, <laughs> playing games and disguise and uh, mm. seduction and things like oh. that are oh. in the works. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. So you could challenge someone to a game of chance, perhaps. You could disguise yourself as someone else by having the right skills. You could seduce someone. Well, that's it. Hit all, and it's in Unreal Five. Are you going to be able to, um, um, have romantic relations with people in this game? <laughs> like, are you going to be able to like get married and interact with your NPC spouse in this game if you choose to? Could you be a quote unquote ladies man and the dashing man of the village who everyone, you know, like you probably you climb in and out of their, their second story window where the husbands aren't home? Like I'm just I don't know. I don't know. I, I need to know more about this game, but they're being so closed mouthed about so many things I wanna know still. Now a question that I had myself was I see a lot of ships in the game's marketing and a lot of water, because obviously this is in the archipelago or takes place yeah. in an archipelago we can't get away from that is there going to be any type of water content it could be a ship like, builder or is it mainly yes. just for sale okay all right oh yeah no, no like on top of water uh, <laughs> uh rivers and underwater stuff all of that are ships going to have like a sophisticated system behind them or is it just going to be you buy a ship and you just wsd around yeah, no, no, no. Like, I think it's going to be both. It, like, if you're someone who need, wants a ship for, you know, uh, just pure transportation, then you can hire a crew and they can handle most of it for you. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, if you want to be the guy who just has a little sailboat and you're handling it all yourself, you know, we can do that. Cool. So you guys did recently announce that you're going to be starting up a Kickstarter. Could you kind yeah. of tell us? Obviously, this is a couple month old uh, video by Wolfhard that I'm reacting to. So Kickstarter is already uh, come and gone. Tell us, viewers, why you think we should consider backing it. <laughs> now, now I'm on salesman pitch. You're on salesman uh, pitch. <laughs> That's why. I mean, you, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe 
Uh, like you think that the RPGs are on a great path and you want to keep going going that way and like some loving the producers uh, who are making those keep on doing those same games. Um, but if you uh, like the idea of kind of uh, stretching out a little bit and uh, making a game, uh, us making a game that uh, lets you uh, kind of play the game the way you want to and create the character you want to, um, and uh, has kind of, a, we call it a virtual game master who will keep it interesting for you. Um, yeah. Then uh, that's the kind of game we're making. Sounds so. very cool. So what's the goal with the Kickstarter? Are you guys looking to fund, uh, I mean, obviously overall production of the game, but is there not a monetary goal? Like, are you guys mm-hmm. looking to expand the studio or? Well, really the uh, goal of the Kickstarter is to do a prologue chapter. Um, so we have a starter island called Ijar, um, which uh, is about the size of more, uh, I'm sorry, about the size of uh, Skyrim. Wow. And that's so that's starter our island. starter island. Wow. Just to say, that's the like, prologue. <laughs> yeah, like, it, 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 like uh, on a map, it, it's like a couple pixels. Um, so uh, we want to expand it beyond that, but this would be, be enough to get us started let us uh you know we've had a team that's been working on us for a couple of years and uh they've been doing a fantastic job but they deserve to be paid and uh we would uh you know want to do this to finish these systems and get to the stage where people can play it and we can get you know notes from y'all and and say like you know uh, let's do this differently. So not every feature is going to be in the uh, early access build, mm-hmm. um, but, you know, the core elements are going to be there. So you can say, okay. you know, cool. what works and what doesn't. Yeah, you're kind of testing out the foundation of the game, but limiting players. It's funny, I say limiting, but we have access to a map the size of Skyrim, but but I still... I know, but, but, but like, but, but again, again, that goes back to my point is like that... You know, we were had one of the biggest uh, games in the world, and mm-hmm. then uh, you know, chapter by chapter, they got smaller. Well, I really hope that you guys get to that because obviously, um, not all companies are able to use early access successfully. But like Baldur's Gate Three with Larian Studios, for example, was a great, sure. great example of a chapter one, and us players help build the foundation of the game. So I'm, I'm really looking. You forward know, I, to that. you know, I met that dude. He met Sven, the owner. Yeah, well, I, I we were on a, uh, I think it was a PC Gamer chat. Oh, okay. Is that yeah. somewhere online? I'll have to try to find. Is it like an? Uh, it chat? is, but it it was a um, podcast. Okay. So it is cool. somewhere out there, not to dissuade people from your channel. <laughs> Fair enough. And the last question I have is: Do you guys have a target? Do you guys have a? T- I know it's hard to say stuff like this because you don't want to give promises that you can't uphold, but. Is there a goal for the year that this early access you would like to be able to have it out by? Is that something you can share or you don't have to? I mean, I, 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 I mean, I could say about a year. Okay. Um, All right. But it, but, but like, I'm not going to say like March 18th. Okay. Fair enough. That sounds good. We have a goal and we'll probably miss it, but we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll hit the goal. He's honest. Actually, you know, broadcast. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you, Ted. I'm looking forward to this game. I, I really like the vibe of the game, the artwork, the music you guys are using. Oh, yeah. and it's just really old the, school, the, and I, it's hard to describe it. But yeah, the the team that that I've been lucky enough to uh, bring to this group. I mean, usually when you're interviewing people for a job, mm-hmm. you're offering them a salary, and I'm not. So it's just people who have been really passionate. Really passionate. And, uh, yeah. So uh, it, it's been amazing for me. Okay. So another reason why the game takes a while, and I've I've heard I've heard them say they've been working on this for four years. I, I don't know if that's completely accurate. I know Ted here said a couple of years. So, um, but if that's so, why why is this game taking so long? Not only is the size and scope of it, but the fact that people haven't been getting paid for their work. They're doing this out of love and passion. I'm sure, they hope to get paid at some point, but right now it's all free labor. So. Um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this. Uh, hopefully this gives you some more information about, 
um, wants Lost Studios and the Wayward Realms, the Kickstarter, what this game is, what this game hopes to be, what this game is drawing uh, influence from, and uh, gives you just a little bit more information. I know it's very early. This uh, this game, the Wayward Realms itself, is probably not going to be out for quite some time. But if it's something that interests you, I hope you're going to file that away in the back of your mind and keep an eye out for more news on this. If I have more news to tell you about it, I will bring it. Um, I do know there is a interview. It's about an hour long interview on a podcast, I believe, with one of the devs working on the game. Um, and I'm going to try to bring that to you in the next few weeks as well. Uh, I have not watched that yet. I watched a couple minutes of what that was at. Um, so I don't know what all is said during it, but it's something we can sit down and kind of go over together. I think that'll be uh, great for those who are interested. So keep an eye on the channel. As always, the link to this video is down below in the description. Also down there is the links to my other YouTube channels as well as my Discord. Love to have you join up if you're interested in keeping an eye on where all my videos get posted, as well as me just talking about various subjects, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody, it's been my pleasure to bring you a little more info on the Wayward Realms. Hopefully uh, get some of you who weren't excited previously a little excited about this game. Uh, again, hopefully optimistic about this game, but I, I really do. I mean, I, I, I paid to join the Kickstarter. So, I mean, obviously I'm hopefully optimistic about this game. I've now sunk some money into paying the team working on the prologue chapter. Um, but ultimately, until that comes out and I've played it, I don't really know. I don't really think I understand and know what this game is still. I'm racking my mind trying to figure it out. And every time I think I've got it, I, I think later on, I'm like, oh, but it could be like more like this. It's kind of mysterious in a retro way. So uh, I, I what, what can I tell you, people? I don't know. I'm going to stop right here. This is Miss Valley Entertainment News. My name is Dredd. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you again next time. You people are the reason I do this. So thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.